If you would, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 20. We'll start with verse number 1. And Benadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together. And there was thirty and two kings with him, and horses, and chariots. And he went up, and he besieged Samaria, and warred against it. And he set, sent messengers to Ahab king of Israel, into the city and said unto him, This saith Benedad, Thy silver, thy gold is mine. Thy wives are mine and thy children. And even the goodliest are mine. Verse 4 says, And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, According to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. Mercy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day you've given to us, Lord. Father, thank you for strength you've given to all of us just to get out of bed. Lord, thank you for the, the time to gather together in, in your house, Lord. We don't want to ever want to take that for granted ever again, Lord. Lord, well, I thank you, Lord, for, for being high and holy. Oh, yes. Lord, for being one that we can come to, Lord, for, with our troubles. But, Lord, but also being one that, that is above all reproach, Lord. Yes. I want to thank you, Lord, for being that God that's upon your throne, mm, right. in your tabernacle, in your heaven, Lord, mm. upon that high and holy hill, Lord, yes. Where, yes. where only holy things are said around you, yes. Lord. Only holy words are mentioned in your presence, Lord, and we want to thank you, Lord, for being that kind of God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you might, Lord, if you might have a, a little bit of a mercy on us, a little bit of grace, Lord, this morning, that you might, you might open the heavens up, Lord, and you just might come down and just meet with us, Lord, and show us where we fall and fail and come short, Lord, and help us, Lord, to draw closer to you, Lord, and be one that, be a, be a God to us, Lord. Lord, we want to turn over everything to you, Lord, and your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that it might be pleasing to you, Lord, that it might be pleasing to your Son, the Lord Jesus, Lord, and that it might be pleasing, Lord, to your Holy Spirit. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lot happening in this chapter here, and, and, and if you're a Bible reader, you know... You know these characters here. They're wicked men. Yeah. And they, do, they did wicked things in their day and their hours. You know, but I, I want to look at two things, two, two comments that are, are made here in this scripture. And if the, with the Lord's help, I'm sure it's going to help us. Uh, two things. The first thing is a very hard thing, a thing that Benedad asked. It was very, very hard. He asked for, he asked for Ahab's silver. Now that's something when you got your, your pocket change all taken away from you, your silver. But then he asked for his gold. That's his retirement. He asked for it. He took it away. It's gone. Yeah, he says, I, I want that too. And then he asked for his, his family. He asked for his wives, and his wives, his children. He asked for all his family. Well, that's hard too. That is hard, you know. It's hard to say, yeah, yeah, you can have them too. Yeah, but uh, he asked for that. And then he asked for the good list. The good list. You know what that is? That's his, that's his means. That's the, that's the young men that are in, the, uh, in, the, in the, uh, all of the kingdom that are taking and doing all the hard work. That's the, that's the, the way they live. That's their livelihood. That's everything. So he, there, there's nothing left that he didn't ask for. He asked, he asked for what he's got now. And he's asked for what he, he's the young man. He's asked for what he's going to have in the future. He's asked for it all. He's asked for it all. He's asked everything for him. So what? But how did he reply? This is the king of Israel. How did he reply? How did he reply? He replied this. He said, "My lord, old king, according to." 
thy saying, I am thine in all that I have. You realize what he said? In that, in that moment, just like that, he unconditionally surrendered. It's an absolute surrender. It's a surrender of everything, all at once. It's no holding back. Don't have this future out there I'm holding on to. Don't have nothing. It's absolute. What does absolute mean? It means unrestricted. Complete. Full. Unlimited. Unqualified. Unabridged. Flat out. No strings attached. No catch-22. No fine print down in the corner. No, no holds barred. No ifs, ands, or buts. Nothing restricted whatsoever. Absolute. Total surrender. So what do we need this day? What do we need? Pastors call for revival. We, we need revival. We need, we need a revival, and God wants us to have revival. He wants us to have it. But what, what is it going to take to have revival? Is it going to take a preacher? Is it going to take an evangelist? Is it going to take a, another meeting or more money or, or any of these things? Is it going to take those? No, it's going to take one thing. It's one thing. And I'm not calling you to be a pastor. I'm not calling you to be a preacher or anything like that. I'm calling you to serve God. I'm calling you to do one thing. And that one thing will make the difference. And what that one thing is for an individual that's born again, believer, following Christ, it's an absolute total surrender. An absolute total surrender. So how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you surrender everything? Well, you start by this. You start by praying. Start, start by talking to the one that, that is in charge of everything anyway. And when you start talking to him, it would be a good thing to kind of start off like this. My Lord. O oh, King. According to thy saying. According to thy saying. I am thine. And all that I have. It's yours. Have you done that? God's not going to give us His full blessing until we're fully surrendered. He's just not going to do it. Are you willing? Are you willing to surrender yourself? Are you really willing to sw uh, surrender your wife, your husband? Maybe it's a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Maybe it's your mother, your father, your children, your grandchildren, your job, your money your time, your talents. Sometimes people have talents that gets in the way between them and God. Yeah. Yeah. God blessed them with a talent and that talent keeps them, keeps them from loving God like they should. See, you can be born again. You can be faithful to, to church. And you may not be totally surrendered. I want to remind you of the perfect example is Jesus. 
He, he was absolutely, totally surrendered. He uh, had a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Oh, it was a big day. It was a big day. Everybody came out. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. Everybody was there, and, and, and the crowd worshipped him. The crowd took him. They, they put palm branches down. They took off their coats. You know, they sang songs. They did all that. They did all that. And they supposed to have been doing that. They supposed to have been doing that. The Pharisees and all those leaders came to Jesus. They asked, well, why are these people doing this? Why are they worshiping you like this? They were upset. They didn't like that he was being called God. They didn't like that. There's people like that today saying the same thing. What, what did he say? And I'm paraphrasing. He, he said, he said uh, if they don't worship, the rocks will. The rocks will do it. We, uh, we need to remember that uh, in Jesus' finest hour, in his finest hour was when he was on the cross. He was paying that debt for us. He was paying that debt for us. And what did he do? He shouted, It is finished. At that time, in Matthew 27, 51, it says, And the rocks rent. You see, everyone that loved Jesus had already left. Mary and John was the last two. They had already gone. They had already gone. There wasn't no one there. The greatest and finest hour. He... He was there on the cross. And what happened? No one was there to even say amen. No one was there to even say amen. Say, hey, you know, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for saving my family. Thank you for doing that for, for, for our community. Thank you. There's no one there to say that. So what happened? The rocks rent. The rocks rent. There was no one else to praise. Mm, we, what happens in our lives when we turn against the Lord and we, we go against what, uh, what He's got for us what he, when, we're, when we get in those dry times what happens I wonder if there's rocks renting for us because wow. we're not focused on the Lord wow. yeah. had some revival here recently mm. don't let it die Amen. You think it's not normal? That's the norm. That's the norm. That's the way it should be. It should be like that in our daily lives every day. Not just here, inside here. It should be everywhere. The, the, uh, one example, and if the Lord lets us, will be done is, is I, I work in a wood shop. I'm just giving you examples of what, what the Lord wants us to do. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I've got all kinds of gloves, I, you know, for different things. And, but I got one pair, this is my favorite. It's just my favorite pair. I use it for all kinds of things. Uh, it's, it, it's black and red. It's got, they, they got this nice uh, cloth where it moves real easy. And then it's got leather in all the right places. But they're worn. They they they're worn. You can look at those gloves. You can tell they've been used. They're they're good gloves, good gloves. But you know how those gloves got to that point where they were worn? They absolutely surrendered to my hand. And to do that work that needed to be done. Now my hands don't show no cuts. It's cause those gloves took those cuts took that wear, took all that tore and stuff. It's also got a strap, a Velcro strap that goes around the wrist so they don't slip off. And I, I always like to have that strap on there so they, they stay good and tight. Mm. We need to be like those gloves. Mm. We need to be, first of all, we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. That glove's full of my hand, but that, we need to be full. And if we're full 
of the Holy Spirit. We're full. That It just submits to any and everything. Yeah, that's good. Whatever the Lord wants done, it's yeah. going to get done. Yeah. It's going to get done because we're going to work like that glove wherever He leads, whatever He does, whatever happens. And then if we, if we have a prayer life, if we have a prayer life that is just latched a hold of heaven, yeah. we're going to be like that Velcro strap on the back yeah. of that glove. Good. Monday morning won't knock that glove off. Good. Tomorrow morning it won't fall off. It's got yeah. that. It's got that strap. Yeah. Good. It's got that strap. Yeah, that's good, Brother Chad. I got. I got other other things I'd like to say but I I think I just want to share with you one one more thing and that is sometimes sometimes revival and things fade sometimes our eagerness just just gets away from us so, sometimes the, the excitement fades. Sometimes our, our worship fades a little bit. But our absolute surrender shouldn't. Amen. And the, the way, the, the key to know that is James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace... Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Amen. If, you, if you've ever experienced revival before, you've ever experienced a closeness with God, but it's went away, I guarantee it's because you weren't humble. You, you weren't humble. God wants and will use humble. He'll use little things. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.